All right, everyone. I'm here to take your mom cast questions. Who's running for office? How do I contact my lawmakers? How do I make a change? Okay, okay, okay. okay. I've got all the answers you need right now on MomCast. Welcome, everyone, to MomCast. I'm your host, Emma Jade. Today's episode is all about empowerment. We're heading into an election year. It feels a bit tense and overwhelming already. So how do we stay on top of what's happening? How do we make sure our voices are heard and that lawmakers we choose to vote for know how we feel? I've got it all for you. Thanks to the American moms. They're twins who both worked in DC and started an Instagram page to give moms like us all across the country access to the government and better yet, how we can get involved. Speaking of getting involved, let's get started off with our top stories. Our last episode on kids and smartphones left a lot of us wondering, okay, we know social media and these smartphones aren't great for our kids, but what can we actually do about it? Well, we have an answer for you. The federal government wants to hear your concerns about teens and kids on the internet. The Commerce Department's National Telecommunications and Information Administration, or NTIA, sent out a request for our comments, public comments, asking parents, teachers, grandparents, aunts, uncles, even kids, anyone with an interest, to write in your concerns and your best practices around internet usage in kids and teens. Here's how we can get involved. Go to regulations.gov. In the search bar right there, you're gonna to wanna to type in NTIA-2023-0008. I had to do this a few times until it brought this up, but just be patient. Under the document section, you're gonna click on the comment button and then you just write in your thoughts. What works for you and your family? What doesn't work for you and your family? What's happening in your household? Be honest and let them know. They're gonna be taking these comments all the way through November 16th. So send it to friends and family, get as many people as you can involved. And as you're gonna learn here on our interview today on MomCast, Lawmakers do want to hear from you, and they will listen. So don't just shrug this off, because I know how many of you really care about this issue. It was so apparent with our last episode, and I love that. I love that you want to make a change. This is how we can get involved with the government and laws that could change because of your voice. Okay, another top story for you. Holiday travel is about to kick in, and the State Department has some good news for us. Trying to get a passport lately has been long, requiring a lot of patience, some waiting months to get going. But now new applicants, and a heavy emphasis on new, can expect faster processing times. Again, this only applies to applicants after October 2nd. Expect to get your passport back in eight to 11 weeks, five to seven weeks for expedited service, which is about two weeks faster than previous wait times. From holiday travel to holiday shopping, have you started yet? In a recent survey, 27% of consumers started Christmas shopping back in August. By the end of September, that number jumped up to 42%. When I asked you on our MomCast page, it pretty much lined up. Close to half of you have already started holiday shopping. Target Circle Week is wrapping up. They offered some decent discounts for Circle members, but Amazon Prime Day, it's happening October 10th and 11th with deep discounts on fashion, home, and toys. Walmart's jumping in too, from October 9th through the 12th, offering holiday deals on tech, toys, and more. But just remember, all of these sales benefit the retailers way more than they benefit us. To make sure that you're actually getting a good deal, experts say we have to shop around. Just do a quick internet search on the item that you're looking at to compare prices. You can also use a browser extension like Honey, the Camelizer, or Invisible Hand. Those will show you the item's price history. All right, let's head over to our interview segment with the American Moms. But first, I got another tip for you. This is from our favorite child and family therapist, Amy Anger, or The Real Parent on Instagram. It's gonna have you doing this. You'll see why, check it out. Here's a really great strategy that you can teach your child to help calm themselves down anytime, at any place. It's called the butterfly hug. And the reason it works is because we are going to be stimulating both sides of the body, which brings in bilateral stimulation. Basically, both sides of the brain are being activated, and this helps connect your child to the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the nervous system 
involved in regulating calm and rest. So this is all it is. And cross your thumbs, bring them up just above your chest, and you're just going to tap one side and then the other. Rhythmically tap. They can do this for just a short amount of time and they will feel the benefits in their body of feeling calm and getting back to themselves. Again, that was Amy Anger. You can find her on Instagram with more parenting tips. We are heading into an election year. We're gonna be using this a lot to try and calm ourselves down, which no doubt it's gonna bring a lot of questions. It's gonna bring a lot of discussions, a lot of divisiveness and feeling overwhelmed, quite frankly. But two moms who once worked on Capitol Hill and the White House, they're actually twins, Andrea and Brittany, they're working to make sure that you stay in the know and realize your value and importance when it comes to elections because your voice and your vote really do matter and they know it firsthand. Check out my interview with the American Moms. What can I do right now to prepare myself, to set myself up for success when it comes to the election year ahead? Yeah, it is easy to feel like you're behind because there's so much news being thrown at you all the time. And then you hear things on the playground and at school and yeah. sometimes you're like, I have no idea what they're talking about. But okay, so here's the easiest thing you can do to get involved. First, go to vote.org and make sure you are registered to vote. That is huge. And then you're going to do this other easy thing. You're going to text your mom group and you're going to make sure they're registered to vote and you're going to have them text all their mom friends. And like that goes a long, long way. So that's the biggest thing. This is how you either register to vote or check to see if you're already registered to vote. Okay. The easiest way is to go to vote.org and then everything you need to know is right here on their homepage. So if you are not sure if you're registered, maybe you've moved, you can click on, are you registered to vote? And I love that it says right here, this will take 30 seconds because that is literally all it takes. It's that easy. You just fill out this form and then you just can check at the bottom to see if you are registered. If you know you, you aren't registered, you can go to register to vote. And it says this will take two minutes. Again, super easy and two minutes is not that long. It's super fast. You'll fill out your information here, hit submit, and then it will take you to your state's um, website so that you can get registered there. But the big thing is, um, we talk about this all the time, is local elections matter and they play a bigger role in your life than day-to-day -day national politics do. So make sure you are aware of what's happening on your local and your state level because that is something that impacts you even bigger. So Can you, you break go. down exactly the leaders or the people that I should know locally? If you go to congress.gov, they have a place for you to type in your zip code and you can find out who your local congressman is. That is the person who works in that to make it really easy for you. The person who works in the House of Representatives that's over your area where you live. Here's how you find and contact your representative in Congress. So the first thing you're going to do is go up to house.gov and on the page, you'll see a little box on the right that says find your representative. So you'll type in your zip code and then hit look up. And there is the member for Scottsdale. To contact him, click on the name, go to contact, and you can either email, there's an online form you can fill out that goes to um, usually an email of a staff assistant or an intern. Or if you have a specific office you need to call, um, every congressional office has at least two offices, one in DC and one in their district, in this case in Scottsdale. But again, some offices have two or three, or sometimes even four. So you have two state senators, but your congressman is over your like exact little area that you live in. So that's the first thing. Then let's like filter it on down to your city council or your um, county commissioners. Um, that's something you can go just Google it or, you know, search on the website or on the internet, go to your city's website and it'll list all of your council or city councilmen for you. It'll list your county commissioners. Those people are big players in what's happening where you live. Um, and to take it down even further, you have like your school board, like, that's huge. And if you want to take it down even further, like find out who's over your PTO or your PTA at school. Those people make a huge difference in your family's lives. You have worked on Capitol Hill. You've been a press secretary for multiple people. So how much do you, they listen to us? What are they, and what's the best way to reach our leaders, especially at that level? Yeah. You know what? Everyone thinks that they don't listen, but they do listen. And there are people who are sitting at the phones and answer phone calls nonstop every day. And they are making tallies of all the calls that come in. They like literally like have little tally marks that of everyone who calls. 
Someone called about this issue, check. And they take that call log to the chief of staff who then goes and talks to the senator or the congressman. And they show them, here's what people are calling about. Here's what's mattering today. Here's why people are upset today. And I think it's really easy to be like, well, I'm a Democrat. So on my congressman's Republican, so they don't listen to me. Or I'm a Republican and my senators are all Democrats. So they don't listen to me. They don't care. And it might come across that way when they're campaigning, but they are elected to be your congressman and your representative all the same, no matter what party you're in. So they, you also matter no matter what your party affiliation is, it matters. And so um, the easiest thing is to make phone calls and to, we always say, don't use scripts because there's scripts that go around all the time saying, here's what you should say when you call. And it's really easy to be like, yeah, I'm going to read this word for word, but it's really, I think it um, discredits yourself a little bit when you call and People can tell when you're reading scripts, but if you call and you're completely genuine and you have, you open up your heart for a second to them like that, those kinds of calls actually matter. And sometimes when you leave people with a story, um, those stories make it up the chain and you know, like, like your, your genuineness on the phone or in an email or whatever, whatever method you're using to communicate with your leaders, it actually matters. It makes a difference. This is how you find your senator. So Senate DACA, and then right below there it says find your senators and there's two in every state. So all you have to do is click on your state and they're there. They'll come right up. And again, you can go to contact and it takes you to their website, contact again, and you can email at any of these links here. There's always an, a little online form you can fill out or a phone number that you can contact. And give me an example. Are, are there anything that you can remember from your time on Capitol Hill where you felt like, wow, like this person's story made an impact? Sure. Well, I'm thinking like <laughs> right now, like we have like government shut shutdown stuff happening. And um, this isn't a new problem, government shutdowns. Like I feel like this is like a, a, a cycle. It's like your news cycle, right? This comes up all the time. And um, so it did all the time when I worked on Capitol Hill. And I think people... Um, there would be people who would call in and be like, hey, if this shuts down, my husband is a veteran and works for this whatever capacity of the government. And we're going to stop getting benefits if this shuts down. Like that's going to that's going to make a difference for my family. And we're going to I don't know where our paychecks are going to come from or where, you know, whatever benefits are going to come from that they really rely on. And we, you hear those kinds of calls and those kinds of stories all the time. Like people, real people on the other end are always affected by things that you know, for better or worse that our government is doing. So yeah, there's lots of stories. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I have been bothered by gun control or stories that are happening in the news, but then I kind of talk myself out of doing anything about it because yeah. we get that idea that my voice doesn't really matter. I'm just a mom of four kids. I'm chasing them around. I can't even, sometimes I feel like I can't even get on a phone call. I mean, even to do this Zoom interview, I have a babysitter over here watching oh. my other two while the other ones are at school. So sometimes it feels like I, I, I almost take myself out of it, but you're saying that we shouldn't be doing that. No, no. It's yeah, you're right. It's easy to get fired up and then to be like, well, probably everybody else is fired up too. So I'll just take a back seat. but that's like the wrong approach because what we do actually makes a difference. And our kids seeing us do something actually makes a difference. They're going to grow up and think, oh, if I want something changed in my community, just like my mom always did growing up or just like my dad always did or grandparents, whoever, like I actually have to do something about it. It's really easy to be, to just like complain online and to throw out insults on Facebook or Instagram. Right. But it, like, that's not, that's not actually helpful <laughs> unless you have 5 trillion followers and like the words you say matter. It does not, those kind of things aren't actually helpful, but there are things. Yeah. If, if you want to make a difference, um, making phone calls for a, a candidate this camp, this season, this election season, um, going out and, and holding rallies and, and joining a rally or, or joining, you know, a, a town hall meeting or something and taking your kids with you and letting them see what it looks like to be involved in a community. Like that a little bit goes a long way, especially in kids' minds. And it's actually really empowering. If you can do something as a mom or as just an adult living in our country, doing something even so little, like making that phone call to a congressman, those things are empowering and it makes you realize, oh, that was really doable. I can actually do more. And then it makes it like, it sets the stage for you to wanna go and actually get involved a little bit deeper. When it comes to election year, sometimes ugh, I don't even wanna turn the TV on because all of the ads and all of the noise, 
what are things that I should be focusing on? What, what are things that I can get myself involved in and my kids involved in so that we're in tune with what's going on with the election and we're, you know, making smart choices, but we're not overrun by all the negativity that sometimes comes along with election year. You know, I think it's really important to have conversations with your kids like at, from a young age on, like make them think that politics and government is just a normal part of their conversation. And so at the dinner table, that might look like, hey, you know, not just on a national scale, but hey, I noticed that um, there's not a crosswalk at this school um, and kids are having a hard time crossing the street. What do you think that we could do or somebody, you know, what could we do to show that we want to help get that fixed? And that might mean like helping your kids write a letter to your school board or um, going and talking to the principal and seeing what he thinks is the best first step, things like that. Like there's certain things you can do to help your kids be aware and help them think that noticing the things around them and getting involved and watching the political process play out, like it's very doable and it's very normal. And I think helping normalize all those things and having sometimes those conversations, which might seem a little bit tough sometimes, I think that makes it normal for them. And it makes them think like, oh, this is something that I can do too. And it's not something that's so far out of reach that we often think that it is like, oh, well, getting a crosswalk might be really hard. <laughs> so, but I noticed there's other parents who might think that it's something that they, that, that they care about it. So I'll let them do it. But like, we can actually make those, take those steps. You guys created a, an Instagram page that has been successful and it's been such a resource for moms. The American moms is what you guys call it. You and your sister. Why did you start that? Where did that come from? It was the Trump first Clinton presidential election. And the morning after the election, we got online and you're watching all of the, the people's reactions to how President Trump had won and people were angry and upset and threatening to leave the country and um, all these things. And we kind of were like, man, people are like really missing the mark because this is just part of American democracy at work. Like this is just part of like, and it doesn't last forever. This is four years. And if you don't like the way that the election turned out, you have a chance to go make a difference in the next election by getting involved. And I think from that point on, we're like, we need to like, it's it's so easy to live in our own bubbles and to be like, ah, oh, my candidate didn't win. Like my, my life is over. Our world is ruined, right? But there are so many things you can do that even if your president, even if your candidate doesn't win, you knew like it just feels good to know that you actually tried. You tried to get your candidate forward. You tried to do something, and you did your best, and you got all your friends involved to do their best. And getting involved and understanding how the political process works makes a huge, huge difference. If you can like one more time, tell me why it's so important for moms to get involved, to be part of the conversation, to be part of this election cycle. It is so easy for us to talk ourselves out of it and to sit back and just listen. But why do we need to take an active role? We are creating a world for our kids. We get to live in it. Our kids are going to live in it. And we get to decide what we don't like about it and what we do like about it. And we get to make those changes. If there is something that is bothering you and you know that it can be fixed, then, oh my goodness, speak up and take action and get your kids involved with you. They can see what it looks like and they can make a difference too. Ah, oh, don't you just love that? Our voices, our opinions, they do matter. And I hope you're coming away from this episode of MomCast feeling empowered to do something. Whether it's about kids in the internet or the upcoming election, you now know what to do, how to contact your leaders, how to make sure that you are registered to vote, empowered to make a change. Thank you so much for watching MomCast. Don't forget, you can also follow me on social media at Emma Jade TV or just search MomCast. See you next time.